The Seattle area has, except for a couple of moments in its history, been a boom town. That kind of environment attracts people, attracted people with disabilities too, who also had their lives enhanced with the connection not only with the Lighthouse, but with the Vancouver, Washington School for the Blind. But the history really grew out of some genuine efforts by a group of women. They were the wives of prominent businessmen in the city of Seattle, and they formed an organization. And they opened the first little shop for the blind in what is now the location of the Olympic Hotel, downtown Seattle, and it grew from there. There was a real need as World War I ended. Soldiers were coming home from the war blinded and they needed employment. So the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated was born in 1918 to create and enhance opportunities for independence and self-sufficiency of people who are blind, deafblind, and blind with other disabilities. The first employees, they'd set up a broom and mop factory where they would be making brooms day to day and selling them in the evening, and that's how they made their money. Uh, we also did caning of chairs and things that were very similar to what most blindness agencies were doing throughout the U.S. at that time period. And then in 1938, when the Ability One program was started under the Wagner O'Day Act, the first items on the procurement list were mops and brooms that were made by blindness agencies throughout the U.S. There was an organization called Handcrest, had state support. Governor Albert Rossellini was the governor at the time who took an interest in it. Around 1963, Handcrest and the Lighthouse for the Blind had merged. The Lighthouse grew principally because of technological changes and good leadership. Among that good leadership was Rudy Elmer, who was a director for about 20 plus years. And he was the one that set a stage along with a board who came from manufacturing, corporate, sales, banking, and legal backgrounds. Lighthouse was one of two companies in the Seattle area that Boeing started doing work with in the early 1950s. And it was started as a project from the chairman of the Boeing company and his wife, who was very interested in giving back to the community in Seattle. And Lighthouse was one of two suppliers and partners that eventually became the philanthropic shops and built products for Boeing uh, going back to the 1950s. That started off with deburring parts and some donated sheet metal equipment and we'd manufacture some items and then it grew steadily into where we needed machine shop support so we had machinery, we had punch presses, Bridgeport mills and then grew from there into CNC equipment in the late 70s to what we have today with the state-of-the-art machine shop. At least 7,000 parts on every Boeing aircraft since the 737 have been made by people who are blind or deafblind here at the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated. I think that's a pretty cool statistic. We found other markets and then using that Ability One program we branched out into more industrial commodities like now we make the entrenching tool and the canteen cup and all of those and experience with the Boeing company gave us the tool knowledge and engineering knowledge to be able to be successful in that market as well. The Deaf Blind program occurred in 1978. It was in Auburn where opportunities were offered to people with disabilities to go outside to participate in fishing, sports, conversations, lectures. Today it's at Seabeck, which is on Hood Canal, and it's a very successful annual undertaking and one of a kind. In 1999, the Lighthouse opened its first base supply center. Today we have seven stretched through California, Nevada, and Washington. In 2008, we expanded to Spokane, Washington, where we created the Inland Northwest Lighthouse. We bought a 52,000 square foot building, and in 2014, we expanded it to a 95,000 square foot LEED certified silver building. In 2015, we purchased a building in South Carolina to support the Boeing Company down in that community along with hiring nine blind people to start off and I believe there'll be 35 blind people working there within four to five years. The expansion we're looking at today is being able to grow and create good value to our customers but also our employees. We look at Lighthouse not only as a phenomenal asset to the community and the great social mission they perform, 
but we look at them as an extension of our own factory. Boeing itself is delivering more airplanes than we ever have. There is a really bright future for both the facility here as well as what we're doing in Charleston. And I see a, just a really great opportunity to grow Lighthouse down there as well. I would like to see us expand into other states and other regions to give other folks that are visually impaired the same opportunity that we've been able to give folks in the Puget Sound area. We've proven that we can open manufacturing opportunities in different regions and we're going to grow from those experiences and those lessons learned and be able to create opportunity not only in the facilities we currently operate but other areas throughout the country where we can add value.